Now, these are the questions I want to uh, address. Um, obviously, I want to define environmental innovation, find out who's doing it uh, and why, and then talk a little bit about um, how you can do it. But let me first just debunk some myths about the environmental economy. Uh, you'd be surprised the number of people who still assume that if you're in the environment, then you're a nice hippie type chap and uh, you want to save the world and you're not particularly interested in money. Well, that's wrong. Most of the entrepreneurs in this sector uh, are very interested in money and why not? Uh, if they weren't interested in money, if they weren't motivated to grow their businesses, then um, we wouldn't be seeing some of the environmental solutions that we now have. Um, our clients, for example, have come to the clean tech sector from, uh, um, well, nothing, uh, from sectors which have nothing necessarily to do with the environment, such as aerospace, property development, and software, and they mostly wear suits, I should stress. Uh, and these people have nothing to do with the environmental economy either, so you won't find many tree huggers, you won't find many saints. Uh, the sector has moved on from being about uh, ethics. It's a, a high growth sector where some fortunes have already been made. Of course, entrepreneurs, when they do provide environmental solutions, are happy that they're sort of helping out. But that's, what, uh, that's rarely what is actually driving innovation. Now, this is not environmental innovation, but until, I don't know, quite recently, this was seen to be a sort of respectable way for a business to begin its engagement with the environmental economy. We'll kind of keep the hippies off our back and win a bit of good PR if we plant a tree in a bit of, bit of scrubland next to the car park. Looks like a pretty miserable tree they've got there as well. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with planting trees. Trees absorb carbon dioxide. They're very much a part of the solution to climate change. But there's a lot more going on in clean tech. There's a lot more required of you, of all businesses, uh, when you engage with the environmental economy. So we've thrown the hippie, the saint, the, the tree hugger, and the, um, these chaps out of the window. Where does that leave us? This is a, uh, an excerpt from The Revenge of Gaia by James Lovelock, which I quite like. Um, an ultra-high-tech, uh, ultra low-energy civilization may well be possible, but it would be wholly different from the present-day vision, where the multitude tries to survive on food from organic smallholders. It's a good passage because it points us in the right direction. Rather than focusing on environmental lifestyles, we should focus more on environmental industries and environmental technologies and services. It's very important, I think, to connect the environment with industry because environment and industry can't live in isolation from each other. We can't return to some kind of pre, uh, some mythical pre-industrial Eden. Um, but what we still need is a, a very simple definition of clean tech. And this is my favorite. It's uh, from a German VC investor we've done some work with called Jürgen Habischler, who uh, heads one of the German VC funds. And what I like about it is its simplicity. Clean tech equals engineering plus regulation. Because what we're seeing more often in the industries we're talking about is engineers developing solutions in response to uh, current regulations, but not just current regulations, but they're anticipating that uh, the regulatory regimes we live in uh, will all be increasingly stringent with regard to the environment. So in other words, the writings on the wall uh, and engineers in general are responding to that by developing technologies and services uh, which are going to help the environment. Okay, let's get a bit more practical and start talking about the actual industries in the environmental clean tech sector. Well, you'll find a few here today. Um, with some impressive companies speaking from the renewable power sector, wind, marine, hydro, and bioenergy, uh, will be speaking in today's workshops. These are certainly high growth sectors, but it's important that we don't overlook energy efficiency, which is still seen as a bit of a sort of uh, ugly sister to um, the glamorous renewables. Um, but the growth prospects in this industry are no less impressive, and in a credit crunch, an industry which re requires probably less capital, uh, which is the case with energy efficiency, um, has got good prospects. Um, there are some unusual suspects lurking within the energy efficiency sector. Uh, for example, software and communications companies are not immediately recognized or identified as environmental. 
but many of the companies enabling the more efficient use, uh, distribution, and generation of energy are essentially software and communications companies. And you'll find some examples uh, of these unusual suspects in the monitoring uh, control workshop later. Water and waste, I uh, mentioned earlier, should not be overlooked. Um, there is a broad range of technologies and processes which aim to meet the growing global demand for cleaner and higher quality drinking water. A lot of that stimulus money that uh, Tom pointed out, I think, will be finding its way to the water sectors, partly because those, the water sectors globally are still, in many cases, highly regulated and in many cases still state-owned, and that makes it, uh, at least as an established channel uh, for that funding. Uh, but in the UK too, I think, um, we'll see a, a lot of growth in the water sector. Um, and the waste sector too, that's perhaps the least glamorous of um, the clean tech sectors. Um, in my experience, if I tell people that I work in renewable power, um, they think that's terribly interesting and they want to talk to me about it. But if perhaps I'm on a train or a plane or something and I want to do some work, I'd rather not talk. I tell them I work in waste management because um, that's a lot less interesting. But it's uh, a great area of opportunity, uh, particularly in the UK where whether we like it or not, we have to f uh, throw less waste away into landfill. Um, the EU has a landfill directive which is going to stop that or at least make it much, much more expensive uh, very soon. Um, and we've also got incentives in the waste sector to produce power from waste, incentives which are really quite exciting, uh, and I'll come to that later. So let's talk about what is driving the growth uh, what is propelling um, the development of this sector. Now, the first thing I want to stress is that the clean tech sector, clean tech is a word which you'll have heard and it's increasingly used as synonymous with the, old, uh, with the environmental industry sector. Um, the clean tech sector does not exi exist in isolation. It's not in some kind of green ghetto. So in the white circle there, energy, water and waste, the neighbors are all the sort of conventional industries Let's call them the more established industries. Now, they trade with each other, and this is what drives their growth. So, for example, nearly all alternative energy, water, and waste companies sell their products and services directly or indirectly to utilities. Sometimes they're bought by utilities because this is the quickest way sometimes for utilities to buy in innovation. As Tom said, um, utilities are sometimes too busy and also, they don't necessarily have the finance available to develop uh, new products, so they buy it in. Um, and if you uh, focus just for one second on industrials, another example after utilities, um, uh, and a very exciting development is the um, gravitation of large industrial companies towards this sector. And they're making acquisitions in this sector, and they're partnering with companies in the white circle there. The second thing to note here is that there's more than one driver. Uh, although I like the definition which focuses on regulation, it's not just about regulation. Uh, it's about new business models. It's about uh, market liberalization to some extent. And the corporate activity I mentioned, uh, the fact that large companies are recognizing the green opportunity and coming in is a considerable spur to the growth of um, the smaller clean tech sector.